<laughs> exactly. And welcome to Overtime, brought to you by King's Cats at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Korniluk. And I'm Chris Kalzuski. Welcome back, Kings fans. This is episode number 25, the Silver Anniversary episode, uh, wow. entitled The Good and the Bad. It's been a solid stretch for the Kings. Players are confident, the fans are excited, the points are mounting. In this episode, we'll talk about the big game against the defending cup champions, the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll also talk about the National Predators game, and we're also going to interview Psycho Puck Lady, the somewhat notorious and controversial uh, hockey yes. blogger, and we'll also give you our fan of the game and our question of the day. So Kings fans, here we go. Crank up the volume. Let's get busy. So Thursday night, we faced the Stanley Cup champion, Pittsburgh Penguins, and all I have to say is, last episode we did a celebratory fist bump. This episode we're going to do a celebratory... <laughs> That's how we do it. Leading up into the Pittsburgh game, this was going to be one of the biggest games of the year for the Kings. They've been playing well. They played a couple of good teams here and there, but this was a true yardstick game. To me, I didn't think we had a hope and a prayer of winning the game. All right, guys, here we go. We are at Staples Center, Pittsburgh Penguins against Los Angeles Kings. Tons of Crosby, tons of Malkin jerseys. You know what? Let's go beat them. Come on. And the Kings come out and played a fantastic game. Back and forth. I thought the Kings really matched up well. They did. You know, this is, this is why it was a big test. How is Anze Kopitar going to match up against Sidney Crosby? He's one of the best players in the league. You know, going into the second period, Pittsburgh did score a goal, but the Kings were really in it. I think the one criticism I had is that they weren't physical enough. Okay, good energy after the first period. I like it. 1-1. Scores tied. See us taking the energy in the second. I think we score one goal. I'm feeling it tonight. That said, we, we still kept out 2-1 going into third. Pleasantly surprised. This ended up being, I think, the best third period I've seen in the last year or so. It absolutely was. Wow, my God, we scored four goals in the third period. It's 2-1, end of the second. The Kings are down. Uh, I think Pittsburgh's got it. I hate to say it. Uh, hopefully the Kings will pull it out. They did in Phoenix in the third. It was the secondary score that I think that made the big difference. Yes. You know, we got the goal from Brown. He got the goal from Stoll. The Kings got it together. They had some key saves from Jonathan Quick. Sidney Crosby said it himself. He said, when you're a team like the Kings, it's sort of on the up and up. You have to beat the big teams. And, you know, he was referring to himself, of course, and his own team. Not <laughs> Sidney Crosby. <laughs> but Kopitar won a majority of the faceoffs against Crosby. And Looking at the two of them out there, he can stand with a Sidney Crosby. One of the best things about the game, Chris, I mean, first of all, we had a sellout, but second of all, people actually showed up for it. <laughs> it was like a playoff atmosphere. It was loud, it was raucous. There were actually more people at this game than there were for opening night against the Coyotes. So today, Saturday, one of those rare and inopportune 1 p.m. games at Staples Center, playing the National Predators, completely expected to light up the game. <sighs> Yeah, that's right, Kings fans. It was a terrible game. It was. It was boring. It really was. You know what, though? Nashville was getting shots on net. Jonathan Quick, I thought, played a very good game. Kept the Kings in it. It's a little concerning because this is a Nashville Predators team that is underperforming this year. They're not very good at all. Oh, they're they terrible. They just look tired and slothy. And this is a game that we need to win. Jared Stoll did have a goal. Uh, you know, it was 2-1 to one after that. It seemed like the, the team was re-energized. And then Rytus Evenons. Rytus Evenons takes a stupid hooking penalty just when we're about to sort of make our comeback. But here's what I have to say about that. Where are you going, dude? Uh, Rytus Evenons, you know what? I think the Ice Girls have done more on the ice than you. You have zero goals, zero assists, and are a minus three. And I can't even remember the last time you fought. So if Bam Bam isn't going to get into a fight, I don't know why he's out there. I understand why Terry Murray wants to have a big guy out there. I get it, but he's not doing anything this year. So the bottom line is, if he's not producing, why not bring up one of the kids? Let's give them a chance. We've got some tough guys down in Manchester. Rowdy, it's not working out. All right, so my point with Evenons... Wait, dude, where did you go? Final score ends up being 3-1 Nashville. Very disappointing game, Chris. Harry Murray was asked recently by Rich Hammond, uh, you know, is there anything you can take away that's positive? Terry Murray's answer was simply no. 
So before the game, Chris and I had the opportunity to meet a Canadian blogger, uh, Psycho Lady Hockey, or Psycho Puck Lady on Twitter. Here's our interview with Psycho Hockey Lady. Hey Kings fans, we are at the Hike Bakery in Los Angeles, California, 11th and Hope Street with the very talented Katrina Katie of PsychoLadyHockey.com in town from Toronto and you've been traveling the entire country. Why? Uh, there's a few reasons. One is personal hockey fan reason to get to all the arenas at some point in my life. So I've been to 18 now. Another is I thought of a new book to write about hockey fans, so I really don't think it's fair to write it if I haven't been to all the arenas. It's really not. Talk about your blog a little bit. What exactly is a puck bunny? Well, I wrote a book about puck bunny when I was 18 because I was trying to figure out what it was. Um, what I kind of came to the conclusion was that there really isn't a definition of it. It's more like a spectrum. Everybody attaches something different to it. Like a, a popular one is that they go around sleeping with the players and they're not really fans. But What's that like? Are there a lot of girls waiting after the games? Are they ready to go? You know, I mean, the, what, what's the story? I would say there probably are. I don't really know any of them personally these days. There was one at a team party back in my hometown for the junior hockey team and there was a uh, couple girls that had a checklist. Basically they had every player's name on it and they had to do some type of activity on the player to count, <laughs> to check him off the list. One girl actually performed on a player that was actually passed out. Wow. Now, did this girl happen to be named Katrina Kane? No. Okay, all right. <laughs> Are you a Maple Leafs fan? No. You're not? <laughs> so what is your team? I do not have a team right now. I'm looking for a team. It's going to be something like, you know, whatever fan sort of gives you the best sort of pitch, or um, is it up for bidding? Or... Well, I'm doing that show me a sign thing. Okay. So now I don't necessarily say that I'll pick your team if you show me a sign, but I might choose to visit your arena if you do. Okay, so the Kings are playing well so far. They're second in their division. They have some really good players. Uh, what do you think about being a Kings fan? I can see, I really like California. I could easily be a fan down here. There's a chance I could be Kings, Ducks, maybe even San Jose. So. Okay, well, Ducks, no, but uh, <laughs> in San Jose, no, sorry. And <laughs> if you're going California, it has to be Kings. Katrina, thank you very much. Kings fans, check out her blog. I, it's, I subscribe to it. It's www.psycholadyhockey.com. We'll link that up right here. Katrina Katie, thank you very much for coming out. It was thank great you, to Trina. meet you. Awesome. Go Kings. All right, so great interview. Thank you, Katrina Katie of PsychoHockeyLady.com. You know, Chris, here's the thing. I mean, when I was playing hockey growing up, uh, there the only women waiting for me afterwards, after a game, was my mother. So I don't know why the puck bunnies didn't come to visit me. Yeah, that's because sad. you were no good. Well, that's true, too. So in usual fashion, we will be presenting our fan of the game. This one comes from Pasadena. It is Adam Sanchez. Big Kings fan, season ticket holder, and incidentally, huge Kings Fest fan. So here you are, your fan of the game. <laughs> Crosby sucks! He's a little bitch! Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins suck! Let's go Kings! Wow, that dude is rowdy. <laughs> he is. I, I love like it. it. Passionate, you know, ready to go. He was. He's normally a mellow guy, people, but he really stepped it up for this. All right, Kings fans, we've gone over and over about this before, you know, in the podcast that just came out, but right as even odds on the fourth line, taking these stupid penalties and not fighting. Why don't we bring up a Kyle Clifford or a Richard Clune, something like that, you know, give these young kids a chance if he's just doing absolutely nothing but hurting the team. Our question of the day for you is, what do you do with our fourth line? Leave us the comments downstairs. All right, so the Kings are embarking on a five-game road trip. They are playing Chicago, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Florida, and Atlanta. Let's hope that the Kings can uh, gain a few more points on the road, not just go 500. So stay tuned for our Luke Robitaille special coming up, celebrating the great Luke Robitaille. It'll be on our favorite site, HockeywoodLA, off of LAKings.com. Let's link that up. I'm Keith Cornell. And I'm Chris Kalsius. And thank you for watching Overtime by KingsCast.